Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we are a webinar, a webcast, an online show, uh, whatever you want to call us. Um, I know that the terminology for that is um, for, up for debate by many people. But whatever we are, we are online live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, both our live sessions and our recorded sessions. Um, this is just our website here for the show. Our recordings are here under our archive sessions. So you can see all of our previous shows here that we have done. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, basically anything library related we are happy to have on the show. We, we want to have it on here. Um, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do uh, presentations for us, do sessions, and we sometimes bring in guest speakers. And this morning we have a guest speaker. We're very excited to have uh, nailed down, <laughs> I suppose, be uh, Courtney Young. Hi, Courtney. Good morning. morning. Who is the current ALA president, American Library Association president, and um, sh uh, see. last fall, Courtney was uh, the keynote speaker at our Nebraska Library Association, Nebraska School Librarians Association annual conference. And I uh, chatted with her after her, her speaking and asked her to come on the show. And we finally were able to uh, have a date where she was actually in her office, not um, traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for ALA. So um, it's great that we were able to finally get um, coordinated to get you on the show here this morning, Courtney. I'm happy yeah. to be here. Um, I did just wanted to say this is not Courtney's uh, first time on Encompass Live. Uh, she was actually on way back in the beginning, and I've got a screenshot here of this. There we go. This is our little screenshot yeah. of the video. This is from um, Computers and Libraries Conference in uh, 2011, actually. I had to go that back for that far. Um, we uh, sometimes took Encompass Live on the road to um, conferences, and we would remote uh, broadcast remotely from there and just have people who were attending the conference speak about what they were doing there. And back in um, for the Computers and Libraries 2011 con con <coughs> conference, that's Courtney way back there peeking her head around introducing herself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Long before she was ALA president, long before being involved, or maybe when you're getting started with that, I think I believe you were involved at that point on. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, yeah I was on the executive, executive board. board. Yeah, so um, she has been on Encompass Live before, so this is her second time. <laughs> on the show. Uh, so I am going to hand over control to uh, you now, so you can get your presentation up on the screen. Okay. There we go. Just have a little switch here. There she is. There she is today. <laughs> right. Excellent. Great. So um, I'll just uh, hand over to you. She's going to talk about, um, we, there's a lot of different things going on in ALA, as everyone knows, but today what we want to talk about was the new strategic planning going on. A lot of things changing. Um, it is that time to switch to a new plan and figure out what they want to do. So um, Courtney is going to um, share with us what's going on with that. Excellent. I'll just hand over to you. Thanks so, so good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, be again in Compass Live again. Um, that was my that was the first time I ever learned about Encompass Live, and it was great to be a part of that discussion. And whenever I get a chance, I do either come in and watch live or watch the recording. So it's something that I certainly appreciate. Um, but I'm really glad to be able to talk with you this morning about um, ALA's strategic planning process and the uh, strategic directions that we've identified. Um, so let's see if my, my slide's working here correctly. should be. Um, so, so in terms of ALA, you know, the mission as uh, is presented here on the screen is providing leadership for development, promotion, and improvement of library and information services and the profession of librarianship to enhance learning and ensure access to information for all. That's the association's mission. Um, and of course, uh, one of the ways that you support and carry out that mission is through a strategic plan. Um, so in January of 2014, uh, the executive board um, started to do some of the pre-planning uh, for the strategic planning process. Uh, the current ALA strategic plan expires uh, in, uh, at the end of the annual conference coming up this year, 2015. 
Um, that was a five-year plan, and I actually uh, did have the fortune of serving on the executive board for three years when they started outlining and implementing uh, that plan. Uh, that planning started in 2009 uh, and was approved by Ailey Council in 2010 at that annual conference. Um, so in 2014, uh, just before the midwinter meeting in Philadelphia, the executive board um, start working on this and decided to do things a little bit differently. And we identified three strategic directions uh, for the association. And those directions are advocacy, information policy, and professional and leadership development. Um, now our core mission, which I've just shown you, and our core values um, have not changed, and those are not going to change. So those three strategic directions that we've identified really need to uh, reaffirm those values, um, you know, as well as building on sort of our long tradition of commitment to the library community, libraries, and the public. Um, and so as we plan for the next three to five years, since this plan will have a little more fluidity, I think, than a previous plan, um, you know, it could be a three-year plan, it could be a five-year plan. Um, we're kind of working with that window since um, one of the things that we want to do as an association is to work on being uh, as nimble as we can given the size of the organization. Um, but as we're doing that planning, we want to make sure that we're also actively pursuing our goals, promoting the association's core values, and moving the association as well as libraries ahead. Um, now the reason that we selected um, these strategic directions uh, is that um, in having various uh, kitchen table conversations with our, our members, um, members of, these, of ALA, uh, members at state associations who may or may not be members of ALA, one of the messages that we heard loud and clear was that people were really interested um, and the association uh, being more focused in its approach to some things. And so um, this provides us with an opportunity to really drill down and focus in on some areas uh, that we think are of particular need and importance for the association, as I said, during that three to five year period. Um, and so in terms of our strategic uh, directions, uh, the first one, of course, being advocacy uh, and then information policy and professional leadership development. Uh, over the course of this year, uh, we've had a series of um, forums. We did a virtual forum in the fall. In November, we had discussion around advocacy and information policy, and in December, uh, on leadership and professional development. And then uh, we've also been having the same sort of almost kitchen table type conversation or forums at a variety of state uh, chapter association meetings and other meetings. Um, the, we had this meeting with the executive, ALA executive board and um, the uh, boards of the 11 divisions of ALA uh, with representations also from the round tables. Uh, this conversation also took place as part of ALA's planning and budget assembly, uh, which is a mix of various people who serve on those division boards, part of ALA council, and on various ALA committees. Um, so we've had and, and worked to make sure that as many people as possible have been involved in those conversations um, and to assist us with our planning. Um, so. Uh, in doing these conversations to really get us start us started and get us towards uh, the documents that we hope to have approved at the end of the annual conference, uh, we started with these three questions, um, which uh, turned out to uh, really allow people to to kind of really dig into. Uh, these three areas so that we could get some really good feedback and make sure that we're moving in the right direction. And the questions we asked were, you know, what, it, what would success look like? So in the area of advocacy, uh, what would it look like to be successful? Um, how do you think we might get there? Uh, you know, what do we need to do so that we can move towards that, achieving that success? And then that final question of how might you help us get there? And when we're asking this last question. Um, we really wanted people to think about the you in a number of ways. So the you could be um, how might you as an individual 
uh, person who uh, is a library advocate or supportive of library issues help us get there? How could you, as someone who is a part of a library system or a library, help us get there? How could you, in your role in your state association, help us get there? Or as a member of a particular committee or a particular division or roundtable, um, you know, there are multiple sort of views in helping us get there uh, and the ways that you could support uh, getting to that ultimate goal of success in each one of these strategic areas. So in the area of advocacy, um, when it comes to advocacy, ALA advocates uh, to the public the value of libraries, librarians, uh, and information services, and we really seek to focus on ALA's mission and priorities, uh, working with three constituencies, and that's ALA members, libraries, and the public. Um, the important components uh, within this strategic direction uh, is building public support for libraries and librarianship through public awareness, uh, providing a vision of innovation. Uh, enabling the future of libraries and promoting libraries as centers of community engagement and participatory librarianship, uh, and promoting ALA's core values and emphasizing the impact of libraries to form the basis for advocacy and community conversations. And so this, the team at ALA um, who were the point people for putting together this um, advocacy continuum uh, pulled together this sort of visual representation uh, of, as it says, the advocacy uh, continuum uh, and how that cycle moves through, how it relates to various levels of engagement, um, you know, ways to transform support into action, um, and so on and so forth. A lot of the feedback that we got in terms of what would success look like for advocacy uh, revolved around things such as um, libraries and librarians being at the table um, when decisions about uh, these cultural institutions were being made, uh, increased funding uh, for libraries, libraries not being zeroed out in budgets um, at all levels. Um, the, people uh, would no longer uh, question whether or not we still needed to have librarians as well as libraries. Um, there would no longer be a question uh, about the role and importance of school librarians. Um, and so these were some of the different types of uh, successes uh, that people identified uh, in the areas of advocacy. Um, and then we came up you know, with what we needed to do in order to get to that success. Uh, what types of tools and resources, for example, would be useful? Uh, what kind of work could individuals or could libraries do uh, to get move us towards that success? And then what role could they play within the committees that they serve on, uh, within their communities, um, you know, within their within your state associations uh, or your particular particular library type associations, um, you know, what could you do so that we could have those successes with regards to advocacy? And when it comes to information policy, um, information policy is per, is per, is com comprised of laws, regulations, and documents doctrines and other decision-making practices involving information creation, storage, equitable access, communication, accessibility, dissemination, use, and of course preservation. Now ALA operating in the public interest focuses at every level on a diverse set of policy areas including intellectual freedom, privacy, civil liberties, telecommunications, funding for education and research programs, funding for libraries, copyright and licensing, government information, and literacy. Operating on behalf of the public, ALA seeks through libraries to lead the advocacy for legislation, regulation, and policies for public interest document the impact of legislation, regulation, and policies on the work of libraries and public access to information, enable successful models of information access that support the ALA policy agenda, and advocate for effective policies that enable libraries to meet the information needs 
of all sectors of the public. And in pulling together this image related to the information policy cycle, um, this team uh, came from ALA's Washington office as well as the Office for Intellectual Freedom. Um, since a lot of these issues have to do with uh, policy and legislation, uh, it's very much impacted in the work that we do uh, and what's done on Capitol Hill. And just last week was National Library Legislative Day, so this was in the forefront of a number of people's minds, um, the hundreds of librarians who were there uh, in DC, as well as the thousands who participated in virtual Library Legislative Day. Um, but also the uh, information, uh, intellectual freedom components as well, in terms of having access to information, but also, and also keeping in mind uh, privacy issues as well. Uh, the policy revolution uh, document that ALA um, recently released uh, also becomes a very strong uh, component for information policy uh, in terms of what uh, ALA uh, can do to be successful, what that success would look like, and how you can support uh, information policy uh, personally as well as from your state associations, um, committees, divisions, and roundtables. When we come to professional leadership development, and this is certainly one of those areas that's very near and dear uh, to my heart, it's, it's something that I find of particular interest. Um, you know, I think it's one of the things that really brings value to the association and to the work that we do in libraries um, to really, you know, amplify the transformational role of libraries uh, in the community. Uh, and I think that by recognizing that professional leadership development of all librarians as well as library workers is essential to high quality professional practice and the future of libraries and information services, um, ALA seeks to provide professional development opportunities through multiple venues, uh, coordinating the multiple opportunities through ALA to provide a coherent, transparent, and accessible continuing education framework for all members, uh, increase the diversity of library professionals, and sustain their professional growth through multiple strategies, and align leadership development and continuing education with the best thinking about the changing information environment. Um, and as you can see from the graphic that was put together um, with regards to uh, this uh, slide, uh, it really notes the different ways in which these things are really um, very much uh, connected and connecting uh, career pathways kind of at the center, very much touching on uh, the role of self-assessment and the accreditation process through library school education, um, you know, recognition for uh, the work that is done and the training that people are achieving, uh, opportunities for self-assessment. And so this is, this is an area um, that in some ways is very large um, and has a lot going on, but it fits together very well, and I think it's very, uh, very much a part of the mission that I showed you um, earlier in terms of what the association's goals are. And so I think that by having this as a particular strategic direction within the association, we're reaffirming our commitment to professional leadership development, um, as well as the role and importance of uh, education at law levels, uh, LIS and high school education, and diversity of the profession. Um, so uh, with regards to all these areas, if we think about it, you know, an effective advocacy campaign on behalf of all libraries of all types will really remind their communities of the vital role libraries play. It will raise that community's profile and ultimately build uh, library support. With information policy, we'll promote coalitions to advance policy positions and advancing the association's mission and agenda. Uh, strong support in the area of leadership and professional development, I really feel will ensure our library employees are all professionals who will renew and improve their skills quickly and frequently as a matter of course, and effectively chart the future of library in the communities where they serve. Now, we've been working through this process, as I said, um, for over a year now. And so um, we're at the point where we're pulling together and synthesizing a document. Um, and that um, document 
will be coming out in the next uh, couple of weeks. It might be right after um, the Memorial Day holiday. But a document will be going out um, to a variety of constituents, the uh, executive committees of the 11 divisions, uh, ALA, Council, members of Planning and Budgets Assembly, um, and as well as to uh, members at large. Um, the goal will be to approve the ALA strategic plan, uh, and that approval is done by ALA Council, which is the governing body of the association, um, and hopefully that will go forward um, and be approved during the annual conference uh, at the end of June, which will be in San Francisco. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, implementation components. And the document that's going to go out is going to highlight, um, and as I've noted here, uh, further outline the objectives supporting each strategy uh, and the specific tactics that will uh, help us to achieve uh, these objectives as they've been uh, carved out. Is there are a variety of objectives um, to support each strategy that will be outlined in that document in terms of uh, answering sort of that those that second question in particular um, you know those first questions sort of what success would look like and how we would get to that success and all of those pieces come directly um, from the various conversations um, that we've had uh, framed with those three questions. Um, and then conversation information continues to go up and be available uh, and posted on um, ALA Connect. Uh, anyone can, can sign up and use and get access to ALA Connect um, to view documents that are available, to make comments on documents. Um, so if you still have feedback that you want to provide, you are certainly um, able to do that. Um, that's where we are in terms of the strategic planning process. Um, and I, I have another item that I would be happy to mention, but I'll stop here for now to see whether or not there are any questions on the strategic directions. Cool. Yes, great. Thanks, Courtney. Um, I don't know, let's see, if anybody does have any questions, please do type them into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I can grab them from there. Um, nothing came in while you were talking, but that's common. Most lots of times people are just listening, taking notes, whatever. Um, I just want to say about the ALA Connect, um, I was actually, um, I just found out from Courtney this morning earlier when we were chatting, um, I, I assumed incorrectly that it was just for ALA members, and it's not. Anyone who wants to, you said, can create an account. So, um, yes. and because I do know that ALA is, I mean, there are benefits to being an ALA member, of course. Um, but some people can't afford it or don't they choose to join their local organization or something else instead, but still pay attention, as what I do. Um, and whether you're a member or not, ALA has an effect on your on your, your profession and, and job. So it's I think it's great that um, anyone can get in there and get their input into um, the process. Right, yeah. And hopefully, hopefully, yeah, the association uh, is having a positive effect on what we all do in libraries, but mm -hmm. um, certainly there there are a variety of reasons why people may choose to, um, you know, get more involved and, and be a member in their state association. Mm -hmm. A number of states, increasing number of states have joint membership, um, so you can join uh, the your state association as well as uh, the American Library Association, and then that that has helped to bridge some of those gaps. Um, but uh, yeah, anyone can um, create an account in ALA Connect. Uh, you know, partic of particular interest, I think, uh, for people who uh, are participating as non-members of ALA, uh, might be the membership interest groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll put in a plug for the diversity membership interest group uh, that was created about a year ago by um, a past chair of ALA's diversity committee um, that I'm working with uh, her, um, Alex Rivera, and, um, and another uh, member, Melissa Cardenas Dow, to uh, get people uh, more engaged and having uh, broader and stronger uh, conversations uh, around diversity in libraries and diversity in librarianship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great group to uh, join. Diversity touches everything that we all do um, and I think oh, yeah. is of increasing importance these days. So 
Uh, it's only one of many uh, MIGs, because in libraries, of course, we like acronyms, <laughs> but it's one of many, many MIGs uh, for people to investigate and uh, and contribute to and learn from and, and get involved with. Yeah, I remember that was one of the things that you were very much involved in was the diversity. I, I think that's important too is that it's not just both from our side as far as the profession but our, our, the users of our libraries. I mean, we get everything. Public library, academic, whatever. Um, you never know who's going to walk in the door. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so. Absolutely. And you need to, yeah, and the, and the library is a place, you know, where we're, we're welcoming and open to all. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's really important to have a sense of who your users are, who your users aren't, who you want to have coming into your libraries. Um, and even if there isn't uh, any diversity in the community that you're in, uh, there may be a real interest in uh, have a, learning and having an understanding and wanting to get access to uh, you know, appropriate, uh, acts, uh, accurate, timely, useful resources uh, related to diversity that's not reflected in the community. And so we need to be thinking about that um, as well, even if we think, well, you know, I'm not in a community that's diverse. Um, every community uh, has um, some, uh, you know, possibilities and potential with diversity or, you know, possible interest yeah. in diversity. You may be surprised once you start looking around. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, one of the things that was, um, as you said, near and dear to your heart about uh, also me, the, the professional and leadership development, the professional development part of the strategic plan is something obviously here from my side. I, that's what I do a lot here is the training. These Encompass Live shows, um, other training we do here, that's something that I'm really, tr you know, trying to keep going here with this show is um, people who can't travel travel to the conferences, whether it's ALA or even a local one sometimes, uh, right. getting these this, these um, professional development opportunities out there with these webinars. Um, here with Encompass Live in Nebraska, uh, we give continuing education credits to anyone who watches these either live or uh, in recordings. And since our shows right. and everything are out there free, other states have done that as well. If someone watches one of our shows, they can then go to their own you know, continuing education people and, and show this as I'm working on, I've learned something new about whatever the topic was. Um, so I think you know, that's one of the things that I've been you know, looking into and paying attention to myself. <laughs> Right, yeah, and how can, you know, as an association, can we make sure that we have those connections because there are mm -hmm. um, a variety of different types of uh, training and professional development and leadership development um, that, that people can be doing. We don't want to necessarily reinvent the wheel, um, but, you know, how do, we, how do we tap into and connect and, and recognize and highlight the fact that, um, you know, the Nebraska Library Commission is doing, is doing this and providing this training and that's a great way particularly because the recordings are available um, to people that you know there are shows that might help them to get up to speed on something before they dip their toe into mm -hmm. uh, maybe another type of um, training right. opportunity uh, you know there are a lot of people uh, who are uh, in working in their libraries and they're the only person oh, who's yeah. there so to leave even to go to a state library conference uh, is you know nearly impossible mm -hmm. yeah. because it means that you're shutting your doors um, and that no one from whatever type of community uh, you're in or you're serving they won't have that kind of access and we know that people rel are relying on their libraries more and more for um, so many basic uh, functions and you know uh, necessities that that's a really difficult thing to do but people do still need um, to have the skills to provide their users with 21st century uh, library services and resources. So. Yeah, and that which meant there about the this this this, this traditionally the, you, the small and rural libraries who are the one person operations, or if they're lucky too, um, that was one of our main you know reasons for starting this show and doing these kind of things online is is for them that. In Nebraska, we are rural almost almost the entire state except for the eastern part, and that's the kind of people that are our major users um, and our major um, you know library staff that we're trying to help here. And it's people both with MLSs, with without the degrees, with them whoever they are. They're working 10 hours a week just keeping the library open, but they need to learn something about something new. Did they get eBooks now? Did you know are they did they add some new computers and they need to figure out <laughs> how to keep them secure and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's yeah. How can they get 
get tapped into the resources that are being provided by the store on the state on a consortial basis. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, and very, uh, very, very important. And and because of the, um, you know, be, being rural, that that means that you're probably even more important uh, to that community because. You know, it's it's not like um, you know where I live here in Pittsburgh, where it's like, oh, I might go over to the branch library in this neighborhood or that neighborhood. Your neighborhoods can be spread out quite a bit, um, and um, as I as I've had an opportunity to go to a variety of uh, state associations, I've been uh, reminded even more and more uh, just how important that is. Nebraska certainly being one of those states um, was at the Alaska Library Association oh, yeah. and. Uh, you know, you're you're um, you know a, sm a small library serving a community of 250 people. Uh, your your library is probably um, having a tremendous impact, positive impact, and changing the lives of the 250 people in that community. Absolutely, yeah. Well, um, while we've been chatting, it doesn't look like any questions came in at the moment, so that's fine. You said you wanted to go on and share some other. Yeah, I th I thought it might be maybe fun and useful for me to mention the. Um, the Connect Ed Library Challenge Initiative, oh, yeah. um, the, which was announced, uh, I guess, almost two weeks ago now. Um, so uh, President Barack Obama's Connect Ed Library Challenge Initiative, uh, it aims to ensure that all school students receive public library cards through their schools. Um, and of course, ALA was encouraged by this announcement to ensure that all students have access to the wealth of reading materials, uh, educational assistance, and digital resources uh, that are made available through na the nation's public libraries. Um, I mean, we know that learning doesn't end in the classroom um, and that our nation's libraries create really dynamic learning environments. And they're bringing together trained information professionals, our, our collections that are both print as well as electronic, um, and of course, that ever-growing important free access to high-speed internet. Um, so that library card uh, program we know is going to have a tremendous positive impact. But of course there are lots of libraries that have been doing this uh, already and some of them are included in the libraries that are going to be part of the sort of um, pilot start to this project. Um, and so there are a variety of partners that will be participating in this, including uh, the Institution Museum of Library Services, um, which is going to convene a meeting of national library, government, and school leaders to discuss the best practices for developing and implementing the school public library card program uh, in local districts. Um, the ALA is um, going to be a part of those conversations as well. Um, what else do I want to highlight? Um, so uh, one of the studies that I am, I am molested found that the most powerful demographic predictor of library card ownership is poverty. More than 60% of children living below the poverty level did not have a library card. Um, first grade children who were living at or above the poverty level were more than twice as likely to have a library card than their more impoverished peers. So we think that this is going to have a real uh, tremendous impact uh, in that area as well. And so um, <clears throat> I think it's incredibly important uh, for us to uh, see how, see the po hopefully the positive impact that this initiative is going to have and hopefully it will also provide us with uh, another um, sort of, uh, what's the word I want to use, uh, it will provide us with, an, with, with yet another uh, tool, I guess, or another sort of piece of the puzzle uh, to ensure and advocate for the importance of having a, a school librarian in the schools as well, because the public library, of course, is going to support uh, those students once school, once they're done with school for the day, but while they're in class during the day, they should also still be using their school library as well, and school librarian will, is incredibly important. Um, in supporting that academic success and lifelong learning. So I just wanted to highlight that. I did have the opportunity uh, to go to the White House uh, the morning that that announcement was made. I think that was on April 30th. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and met with the, um, the team from the White House, the White House staffers who were um, working on this project. I uh, brought together get, a number of us who were sort of from the library world. Um, so 
I was there for the American Library Association, uh, IMLS was represented, the Digital Public Library of America, uh, Urban Libraries Council was also represented. Um, but there are also um, publishers there as well who are going to be providing uh, the free uh, electronic content uh, that is particularly uh, at the level for these school children to learn. So there were, I think, four or five of those uh, publishers who were providing, uh, you know, book content as well as serial content um, for the students. Um, so it, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good start. Um, and I thought it was something that is fairly new um, that I would highlight for you all this morning. Yes, I, I, I did see that made a huge splash in the library world when the announcement went out about that. Yeah, that is, now I'd heard of Connected Ed before, of course, that's been around doing various things already, but right. um, having the connection now to the um, ALA and the Digital Public Library of America, that was uh, a great thing. Uh, right. The school librarian thing is very important, I agree too. There's too many times I'm hearing of schools getting rid of their librarian and thinking they don't need it, and it's just so, Painful because I remember using it when I was in school. I mean, I, I may sound like some, you know, of course I became a librarian, but no, that wasn't it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was a place we went every every week or something. There was a session, a you know, part of your school was to go in, was to go in there, and I just can't understand. I don't, I just can't wrap my mind around not having a librarian in the school. I mean, it's learning, it's education. It seems to be a no-brainer to me, but obviously to other people, it's not. <laughs> Right, and it's one of the reasons that the advocacy piece is so important. Yes, yes, that so connects to it. Mm -hmm. For the importance of school librarians, um, because they do uh, have a positive impact on student learning. Studies are starting to come out that demonstrate that that's the case. Makes a difference, <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hopefully um, we will um, move forward and the positive things will happen as a result. Um, but yeah, the kid, the, but this particular initiative with Connect Ed is a, a slightly different kind of collaboration. I think that um, the staffers at the White House are, are very interested in this new collaboration and uh, all of the positive, potential positive outcomes um, from it. It's also going to be very useful, I think, to our uh, public library colleagues who have also been working very hard um, to be in the loop on um, school curricula so that they can uh, truly support the students who are coming in. And so with this partnership, this actually means that uh, more purposeful and productive conversations will happen uh, between um, administrators in the schools, in the libraries. Um, so hopefully that means that, that librarians who are involved, um, both from the schools and the public libraries, will also be connected so that, um, that the support that's provided uh, is not just goes just beyond providing a card, but actually um, provides uh, the librarians and both locations with the information they need so that they can better serve these students. Yeah, that is something that is so inconsistent. Uh, I hear so much, some libraries, some public libraries say, of course, we work in the schools all the time. We actually go into the classrooms and talk to the kids about how they can then use the public library and go back and forth all the time. And then you hear from other ones who say, oh, God, no, we would never, they don't want us there. It just doesn't happen. And it's just so unfortunately inconsistent across the whole country. Right. So, so hopefully this will this will become a, a common practice, and we'll, yeah. con we'll continue to see, um, you know, pos real some real positives um, as a result for particularly because what's you know our goal is to is for the students to have the information and resources that they need and to feel supported mm -hmm. uh, as they're going through that that process and be successful. Yeah, education happens once you leave school too. Whether you know it or not, it's happening. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> now the e-content yes. that you, the the publishers are offering is that um, is that yet to be determined? What exactly will be made available, or is that still being like what exactly the titles I, and lists and whatnot? I believe or? I believe they're still working on um, the con on what that content will be, and if I peek out of the frame, that's here okay. for just a sec. Oh no, actually, I think I've got it here. Um, I might be able to highlight uh, some of the publishers who I knew are are, are participating. Um, I know some places, some schools, and li some libraries do 
already have contracts and things that they're doing, e-books and um, e-journals and whatnot, but I just wonder, you know, they'll then have to match that up with what's now going to be available from this new program and see how that all right. merges, so, I guess. Um, so let's say so some of the major publishers and their authors have pledged to donate titles uh, to low-income students and those include um, Macmillan, Simon & Schuster, Penguin Random House, Hachette, Candlewick, Bloomsbury, Lee and & Lowe and Lee & Lowe was one of the um, there was a representative uh, from Lee & Lowe and they're the leading independent publisher of multicultural books oh, nice. and they're including unlimited access to over 700 of their titles. Um, and Cricket Media, Cricket Media was also um, also had a representative uh, at this meeting at the White House and they're offering full digital access <coughs> Excuse me, to all of its market leading magazines for children and young adults including Ladybug and Cricket mm -hmm. and HarperCollins. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So that's a nice broad range of different publishers and different uh, genres that'll be out there. Yes. Nice. So you said that it would be um, offered to the low income students. Has it been determined how <laughs> how they will, uh, has it been figured out how they will determine who are the low income students who are going to be receiving these resources or is that also yeah, a watch. to be done? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, a number of these things are still too. Yeah, much I know it's just announced. I'm probably asking things that yeah <laughs> <laughs> have to be figured out. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure that particularly um, librarians are going to be asking those mm -hmm. questions. I'm sure IMLS is probably. Yes, that poverty them. rates and things like that. Things that are typically would indicate that these are the areas of that need the most <clears throat> assistance. Right. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I know it came up in when um, librarians were talking about this new initiative was um, the e-content is, is great to offer this to the library, especially for ones that maybe can't afford to have their own e-book programs or whatnot. Um, but what about the devices that the students or that the, they, 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 the kids need to actually access them? Nobody's going to read on a cell phone. I, I don't read on my cell phone. That's I've tried. It's painful, <laughs> but <laughs> as I have. But is there some part of this? Because honestly, I haven't read every single thing about it that will help getting devices into the kids' hands or into the libraries or schools for them to be able to access the e-content. Uh, that I don't know. I'm checking my my notes um, because they are. Um, because New York Public is going to be developing an e-reader app, e -reader app mm -hmm. that will provide access to the materials. Right. Um, but I don't recall as I've looked at this, um, let's see, to do, do, um, <clears throat> See, New York Public is going to work with First Book, um, and they were actually were there was a representative from First Book at our meeting. Um, their book donation nonprofit to help make sure ebooks reach students and low income families. Um, so I don't know whether or not uh, da -da, that will be a um, e-reader commitment mm -hmm. or some other kind of, you know, computer commitment. I'm sure that that's something that's still being tablet being yeah. worked out. But yeah, but, I mean, certainly yes. If you're going to say you're providing access to electronic content, does that just mean that um, that the library card provides you with that information, with just logging in with that library card number, then means that you have access to it if you're in the public library, or if it also means beyond the mm -hmm. walls of the library. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. like, like we said, this just announced lots of lots of things still to be determined. And yes, well, it's good yes. that they've got you know librarians involved in it because they're the ones that are on on the ground. I would say dealing with the, the kids who come in and say, you know, I don't have a cell phone, I don't have an internet plan at home, we can't afford that. So how do I do this? Do you have something you can loan to me? Those kind of things. It's already being. The programs are there at libraries, just like the ebook programs are at libraries as well. But having even more is 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 good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And then you know, then hopefully, then for the kind of work that I do as a someone who works at a you know university library, that I'm going to also have students who, if they've had <clears throat> some experience with this program, that they're going to have expectations of the kinds of um, information and mm -hmm. services and you know resources as well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to provide for students. Now, some, a lot of the that. schools do that one to one to one program now too, where every student is given a device of some sort. Um, right. The elementary and high schools, a tablet, a laptop, whatever. Um, right. I can see there potentially being a um, domino effect. I guess this program's out there, and we've never looked into doing that at our school in particular, but maybe we should now that we have all these resources. These resources we got right. for free, let's now put our money into the other end of it to help continue it on. Now, not every place will be able to do that, but you know, right. there could be that kind of a... It's working yeah. towards closing gaps, mm -hmm. and yeah. we're, that's, that's sort of the, the goal, is that how, how can we continue to close these gaps and bridge them you know, mm -hmm. at the same time? Yeah. Well, I think it's great. Yeah, when I was, I was reading, like trying to read up a much of, as much of it as I could. <laughs> but like you said, still <laughs> things to be done. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on as the yeah, program yeah. is more developed. Um, so um, does anybody on the line have any questions? I've been the only one asking questions so far. Um, but if anybody else does, uh, please do type into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, I will say that um, the websites that um, Courtney has mentioned um, on ALA, ALA Connect, um, I've been uh, saving to our um, delicious count. Yep, there's the, the strategic planning community there on ALA Connect. Um, whenever we do a show, we always save any links as well that are mentioned. So I've got that in there for you. So you'll be able to get to it quickly afterwards. And I looked up information also about the Connect Ed program and the, the press release and the IMLS website for that. So um, you'll have easy access to those afterwards with the recording of the show as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's typing anything urgent in, so that's that's fine. We covered everything. Anything else that you want to share while you um, got the, have the floor? <laughs> got the, <laughs> the floor, you know, definitely, you know, if you haven't looked at ALA Connect, please do so. Um, you know, the, the three areas that I've focused on during my presidential year have been uh, diversity, engagement and outreach, and um, and professional development. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll be making some announcements and doing some more things around diversity uh, before the end of my presidential term, which will be the end of the annual conference in June, mm -hmm. uh, but even still doing some things while I'm the immediate past president uh, during the next year. Um, you know, <clears throat> if you ever have questions or comments or concerns, you know, we're more than happy to, to hear from you and to get that information. Uh, you know, the association is, is uh, this organization is an association of people. Um, it's, all, it's all about people it's having conversations, making connections, and doing things uh, that support and improve libraries of all types, um, getting the people who work in those libraries and the people who use them. So um, never... Uh, Never be afraid to uh, ask those questions or bring up those concerns because uh, what you have to say certainly matters uh, to the work of all of us. Mm -hmm. So there, and there's where you can contact Courtney. Ask her anything you need to know about ALA. <laughs> and if I and, and and because you know I'm a reference librarian at heart, if mm -hmm. I don't know the answer, I'm sure that I'll be able to connect you to someone who does know the answer. That's what I always say, or yeah. That's what our idea. People always think, oh, you're a librarian, you can answer this question. I said, no, I don't know everything, but I know how to find out. Exactly. <laughs> I can find it exactly. out for you. <laughs> All right, well. Knowledge is power. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Courtney, for being with us today. I'm glad we were able to get you on the show. Um, finally, it took us quite a few months to get things nailed down. <laughs> um, but I'm glad <laughs> you're having some downtime, maybe relaxing, actually, in your office before you head out again yeah. on your next trip. <laughs> a little a little break before the, the next trip coming up here in a couple of days. But yeah, no, it's good to be able to um, to to do this sort of thing. I mean this is uh, an example of the type of thing that uh, you know we need to do and that I hope to um, continue to do more of because not everyone of course got to out to the Nebraska Library Association conference mm -hmm. to see me in October so it's good to be able to you know be here on everyone's desktop mm -hmm. in Nebraska and other states as well mm -hmm. I know that there are many people who uh, <clears throat> who you know and asking about uh, other uh, professional development opportunities in Compass Live is always one of the ones that I mention to people or that people I know um, gravitate to so it's good to be able to participate yeah. again and, and maybe <laughs> next time it will be 
four-year gap. No. <laughs> a, part of it, a part of it as well. Yeah, we can have you come on sometime when when the ALA things have died down to talk about what you're doing there at Penn State. That'd be something great to, yes. to bring in. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, I was good. Oh, yes, you were talking about people from. Yeah, I was trying to remember what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are. Um, like I said, we're free and open to anyone, and we do use pretty much. We are the Nebraska Library Association or Commission, <clears throat> but our top our sessions are so are not generally um, Nebraska specific all the time. No, we bring in um, we have speakers from Nebraska who talk about just what they're doing in their libraries, which would be relevant to anyone, and we bring in people from the outside, like Courtney, and anywhere anywhere from across the country, um, to bring you know basically bring them. To to us and to anyone who can watch. So um, <clears throat> it's, it's a nice broad mixture and variety, I think. I'm glad that's that you like it and that we're, we're, we're out there, we're helping, we're, we're, you're use, we're, we're useful, that's, that's my goal. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Courtney. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I'm going to pull back control to my computer now here mm -hmm. and show you here. Um, this is one of the, what we were just talking about, about the uh, program there. Here we go. Uh, there's you at the um, White House or when they were doing the announcement, and then, yep, April 30th. So I've got that page, um, the Connect Ed page here, um, the Library Challenge page from the IMLS website. And as I said, all of these are in our delicious account, so um, they'll be linked all together for you and all the other ones that we've grabbed, that I grabbed from this morning. Um, we added as well. Uh, so that will wrap us up for this morning. Thank you very much, Courtney. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, the show has been recorded and will be posted to our archive page uh, probably tomorrow will be when we get it all together up there. We'll have um, – Courtney, I think you're going to send me your slides. Yep. If anybody wants those, um, we'll have them. We'll post them to our YouTube our – SlideShare account, um, and our recording will go on our YouTube account. That'll be here under our Archive and Encompass Live sessions. So um, look for that tomorrow. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you'll join us next week when our topic is reading and sharing. The system directors talk about books here in the Nebraska Library Commission. Li and here in Nebraska, we have four regional library um, systems which provide consulting and, and assistance to libraries in our state. And we've invited them to come on and talk about their favorite things they've read recently. Basically, just some book talks, sharing some interesting titles. So um, definitely sign up and join us for that and any of our other shows that we have coming up. We just kind of mentioned security for IT security, computer security. That's coming up later this month, too. Um, sign up for any of those. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do go ahead and like us over there. Uh, you'll get notifications. Once it comes up, there we go, <laughs> of when um, recordings are available, when a show is starting up. <clears throat> I always give a reminder, like I did here, to log in right now people to log in on the fly. So if you are big on Facebook, please do go ahead and like us over there. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you very much for being here, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>